Advanced autonomy is key to the Air Force's future drone plans, but humans will still be making important decisions like when to fire a gun. Senior U.S. Air Force officials have provided new details on the service's vision to integrate the autonomous capabilities developing the new drone, as well as the groundwork it has put in place through various recent tests. The Air Force views progress in autonomy as central to its plans for an upcoming fleet of drones designed to work collaboratively with manned platforms. However, humans are expected to remain in the loop for the foreseeable future when it comes to certain sensitive tasks, especially decisions about whether or not to use lethal force. New information about what the Air Force is currently calling the Collaborative Combat Aircraft CCA, effort came during a roundtable at the Pentagon attended by the War Zone and other outlets yesterday. The CCA is part of the Air Force's broader Next Generation Air Dominance NGAD, program, which includes work on advanced stealth manned and unmanned aircraft, as well as sensors, network and combat management capabilities, weapons, next generation jet engines. We are in a transition phase to bring new capabilities to the Air Force that are more revolutionary than evolutionary, Major General R. Scott Job, Director of Plans, Programs, and Requirements, at Air Combat Command, ACC, said at the desk. Round. There are a lot of interesting things that the CCA brings with a lot of autonomy to the fight. One of them is your ability to manage risk in various ways that we have not been able to before, he continued. So if you engage in any aerial combat, you get to a certain point where, you have to make decisions about survival, whether pro or against yourself, and position very well. American Human Pilot Although the Air Force says CCA requirements are currently undisclosed and potential budgets and schedules are still being finalized, Major General Job added that these drones will bring a lot of capability at a lower price than ours. The service has shown in the past that at least some of the drone design in the future CCA system can be withdrawn. The term is usually used to describe aircraft and other major weapons systems developed with particular care to balance cost and capability so that platforms can be more freely lost in battle, especially, at least in some cases, so that higher-end, more beautiful platforms can survive. Job further explained that the ability to approach in new ways with future CCA paved the way for being able to think differently about tactics, techniques and procedures in future aerial combat. We know we have a pretty good ability to perform takeoffs and landings automatically. So that's pretty simple behavior. Automated routing and fuel planning, we think that's pretty good, Job said speaking of the current state of autonomous capabilities for drones available to the Air Force. I can do a lot of different types of mission planning activities. I can also do some formation station maintenance. A fighter pilot can basically tell him, a CCA type drone, with some pilot vehicle or man machine interface which is fairly easy, to, fly formation from me and has predefined parameters, Job offers as an example of collaborative behavior that is well established today. The Air Force is already exploring the technology and related operating concepts around having the CCA do more than this, including firing weapons at enemy forces. Of course, when actually using lethal effects, and potentially even some non-kinetic effects that could pose serious risks to innocent people if used inappropriately, humans are still expected to be the final decision makers in the future. However, we don't see a path at this time, for us to deploy an effective capability in its wartime capacity, but also support American values and the law of armed conflict, Job stressed. I'm not going to make this robot come out and start shooting something. That's not something we're going to do. Job noted that future development of autonomy could potentially spill over and be integrated along with flight control and mission systems on manned aircraft as well. He described his own experience striking targets on the ground in Afghanistan and how autonomous capabilities can reduce his workload by automatically determining optimal routes and helping to position aircraft into precise positions relative to threats. 
There is also hope that eventually the process of developing and refining the underlying software to support autonomous aircraft capabilities will progress so quickly that it can be carried out right in the middle of actual operations. The Air Force, among others, has also expressed interest in developing this kind of rapid software to support electronic warfare capabilities, as part of a concept currently referred to as Cognitive EU. Something we've never thought of before, in a typical combat squadron, do I need a digitally savvy data scientist, coder and intel person to enter all the data coming from one of these? And then reprogramming some behaviors to be smarter, such as from the first trip in the morning to the first trip at night, said Major General Job. So, what we want to do in the end, is, code in the morning, fly in the afternoon, added Major General Heather Pringle, head of the AFRL. Frankly, even faster than that would be desirable, he added. The Air Force and other elements of the US military, of course, have been working to develop autonomous capabilities for both manned and unmanned aircraft for decades now in public, and there is definitely significant work being done in the secret realm as well.